We're going to look here at a simply amazing structure in the horse. It's known as the stay apparatus in the front limb. Okay, so when the animal is bearing weight, the straightus ventralis muscle is causing weight to pull on the scapula. And so we're going to be wanting to flex the shoulder. But in the biceps brachii muscle, we have a fibrous band which courses throughout it, which prevents that from over flexing. And in that fibrous band, it then continues through the biceps brachii and becomes what is known as the long tendon of the biceps brachii or the Lacertus fibrosis. And it's something that you can actually palpate here on the live animal. And what it does then is it blends into the extensor carpi radialis muscle. And so that the tension pulling across that biceps brachii then helps maintain extension on the carpus. Okay. And so we're preventing overflexion of the shoulder as well as maintaining extension of the carpus. Okay. And you ask, why doesn't the elbow just flex? Well, the reason is there is that collateral ligaments of the elbow are placed caudally more than in other animals so that when the horse extends its elbow, it locks it into position so that to then flex the elbow, they need to purposely flex that elbow with muscular effort. Okay, so now we have the shoulder maintained, the elbow and the carpus. In addition to these, we have what are called check ligaments. Okay, we, we have a superficial digital flexor here. We have the proximal check ligament, which attaches to the radius. And then from the deep digital flexor tendon, we have the distal check ligament, which becomes continuous with the palmar carpal ligament on the palmar aspect of the carpus. Okay. So with those, what they do is remember these muscles are not active during normal standing. Okay. And so in theory, they could just relax and we could get real overextension then of our fetlock. Okay. But these ligaments here, as you see, keep it in check how much stretching we can have of these tendons. Okay? So these are helping prevent overextension of the fetlock. They are also pulling at the carpus, you see both above and palmar too. And so they're going to main, help maintain then extension of the carpus. Okay? In addition to those, we have this structure here, which is the suspensory ligament. Suspensory ligament comes down and attaches to the abaxial surfaces of the proximal sesamoids, and then have an extensor branch that comes around here to attach to the common digital extensor tendon. Okay, so with these tendons here, as well as this ligament here, those are all helping maintain the fetlock so we don't get overextension. Okay. So we then are able to maintain extension of the front limb without any muscular effort. So that is why horses are able to stand and doze. Okay. So they kind of have their front limbs locked in extension while they're sleeping. Okay, the hind limb has a similar apparatus. However, we will find that it does require a little bit of muscular effort to maintain the lock of the patella so that we have lock of the stifle by the vastus medialis. And so therefore they're going to get a little fatigue. So that's why they do one side, they lock, and then they'll shift to the other side as fatigue wears in. Okay, but in the front limb they don't need that. Now something else truly amazing, this fibrous band 
that runs through the biceps brachii when this limb is in total extension caudally just before the foot comes off the ground this is really tightly stretched and so that when that foot comes off the ground the recoil from that allows a hundred times more power in the flexion and forward movement of that elbow okay also down here with these flexor tendons and the suspensory ligament when we're bearing weight we're putting all this tension upon these and we're also building up potential energy so that when that digit comes off the ground a lot of the flexion then we see through the carpus and the fetlock the digit is due to recoil rather than muscular effort so the flexion of that limb coming off the ground a lot of that movement is passive and it's conserving energy cool stuff